All right, so this has uh, actually been in Dragon West for a while. Uh, I just haven't actually used it. And I still don't know everything that Osmocom BB could do or can do. I've never really got much into it. But I wanted to show at least how to set up the, uh, the GUI and use a couple things that I feel comfortable talking about or that I've been messing with so far. So this is a uh, dragonless focal that you're looking at. Uh, I have this picture of the phone. The C118 is uh, what I have hooked to the laptop with a cable that you can uh, you can either make or you can purchase uh, to link the phone to the laptop. And then what we're going to do is uh, flash a firmware to the phone and we're going to use some host software. And I think all that I've really messed with so far is the mobile cell log and the scan the first uh, scan application that it talks about here you can read more about that and um, see what el other things that you can do but I'm just gonna focus on those three and to do that I'm gonna use a GUI that uh, a user contributed and has been in Dragon West uh, just needs a little bit of setup and then we are going to use um, uh, Yate BTS uh, network uh, to mimic or to replicate uh, what's needed to actually run this and of course that's all funneled back into uh, a box over here so you need to be careful when you're doing any sort of testing like this um, have the appropriate setup okay so let's take a look uh, if we look in the user source osmocom uh, bb folder you're going to see there's a file here uh, called install. I'm going to actually, I want to edit this real quick. I'm going to change this to pip. Yeah, I'm going to change that to pip3. Everything else looks okay. And what this is going to do is it's going to copy this Calypso BTS into the user bin directory and then make it executable. Uh, there's a little more off to the side that's going on here. Um, I'll just change in directory. So. Uh, shouldn't be no issue there. You can read uh, the file here and you can see what it's doing. So anyways, uh, let's see. We'll do sudo sh install. I had already ran and um, have these requirements uh, set up. And then what you'll also need to do is sudo uh, let's see think do sudo copy dash r osmocom the whole folder which I've already done you can see it there I've copied it there shouldn't be any issue overwriting what I have there I was messing with it earlier so now that we have that set up I'm just going to go ahead and change into the directory there You'll see there's a firmware folder, a config folder. If we look in the config folder, we're going to see that we have a mobile config, which is needed. I won't go over all the details of this, but you can tweak it as needed. I'm just going to leave it default. And let me think. Bin, we have our mobile apps that I just talked about. So let's run the tool. We can run it uh, either directly here or since we copied it to the user bin. We'll run this. And so it's going to ask, uh, do we want to run it? Yes. Um, Motorola series. I have a C118 and we're going to flash uh, the layer one high ramp bin and that's what we need to use these uh, host uh, mobile apps with so we'll go ahead and hit one is the phone attached yes it is I've had the battery pulled out I pu uh, put the battery back in the phone is off go ahead and hit yes you see couple windows pop open and I'm gonna push the end red button on the phone 
you'll see the firmware gets sent to the phone. We'll give it a minute. And so it's going to go through and use the um, cell log and it's going to be scanning there. But if you look closely behind the scenes here, it's asking you what um, arson that you want to look at. So how do we do that? Let me see here. I've already uh, pre-configured Yate. And so I have a Blade RF XA9 plugged in and we're going to have the uh, Yate BTS network come online which over here I was messing with trying different expressions here honestly can't remember uh, for any um, phone but the DCS 1800 and then the uh, Arsene is going to be 800 and there's the frequency so if I come back oh it would help if I had the Blade RF plugged in Blader F uh, also source Yate recommend loading this although now that I think about it I think I was running it without it but let's see we'll go ahead and load that particular FPGA for Yate come back and we'll do sudo Yate start that up. Now ultimately what I'm going to do here is I'm going to focus on the uh, network that is created by Yate uh, and then I'm going to pipe that over to Wireshark with a GSM tap. So let me see, we need 800. Now you'll see a CCCH scan which I mentioned comes online. It's looking at the network that we have uh, set up with the Blade RF XA9. Now you've got the Osmocom BB interface, which I think I'll save this and talk about this in the future. This is an incredible um, amount of uh, things that this can do. I was messing around with it earlier. You can make the phone without a SIM, uh, connect to a network. You could do all kind of things. But let's uh, let's stay with what I wanted to talk about here. I need to find the window. Yeah, here's what I'm looking for. So we'll open up uh, Netcat 4729. And we're going to also pull open Wireshark on the loopback. And we should filter for, yeah, port 4729. Let's see. Open Wireshark. And there is our GSM information. You can see the paging requests, the immediate assignments. Uh, there's no phones on this network uh, right now. But you've got your GSM tab header. We can see our downlink. You can see all the information about that network. We can stop it and we can check out a paging request. And so I know that was pretty quick. I mainly want to focus or I wanted to focus on the graphical user interface that makes a lot of this easy. Otherwise you're gonna have you know multiple different windows open. You need to know the commands, which is a good thing anyways to um, load the firmware into the phone. If you look at that um, file that I op briefly opened you can see how it's working and how it's sending the different commands for the different types of phones how it's opening up the mobile app and then uh, once you get comfortable with that you can start um, doing things manually like you see I was doing here earlier um, so just as an example yeah, this command here which I've talked about before is used with my particular phone and loads the correct firmware and I guess I'll just do a brief little spiel on this there's the mobile app which the GUI is uh, doing for you there's how it is started up I know there's probably a, a lot of things going on here with all these windows but if you follow that initial little setup uh, 
you know have the right type of phone then you should be able to at least use those first three apps that I was talking about obviously you're going to need a GSM network as well so all right I hope that helps thanks